Hi, and welcome to part two in our HEC HMS for HEC RAS users series. Now, I'm not implying with this graphic that anyone's a dummy here, but we do want to dumb it down to the bare basics for anyone who hasn't tried HMS yet, so that you'll be aware of some of the really awesome functionality that could save you a lot of time going forward and can help you make some really cool maps like the one you see behind me here. Now, let's start with nothing but Google and dive into HMS. Now, what you'll see here uh, when you Google HMS, uh, it'll take you to the core page and you'll just go to the downloads directory, which you'll notice right off the bat, generally there are current versions and beta versions. Now for a limited time, there's no beta version. I think 4.10 as a beta will be up there very soon. But uh, in the meantime, because this is so new, that's all you have. So if we go ahead and run the program, just like any other, um, you won't see many differences in how to install it. But uh, I did want to point out one thing to you when you first open this thing up. Uh, when you run the program and scroll down through the um, messages that it's going to give you, the prompts, um, in general, uh, you can just say, yes, I accept the agreements. But here they check your integrity and you actually can't click on it until you've scrolled through it. <laughs> then you agree to the terms and off you go. So with that, you'll have a new menu item that we've been waiting boy, about eight months now for, for the full version of 4.9 with all of its functionality. And when you load that, uh, load that up in Windows, you'll see the brand new 4.9 screen. And let's just pull up that interface for you here so you can see what it looks like. Very similar to the previous versions. Um, but uh, to show you an example, I'm going to walk through this very quickly. I've taken a terrain file and dropped it into a folder already prepared. Um, this is one that we've used in our previous exercises um, for the RAS solution tutorials and for the Australian Water School. I do recommend going to program settings and I've got a project directory I've set here and I also always need to remember to change to metric for where I'm at in the world and um, use uh, some of these other settings are very handy to save you some time. So once we've done that file new I'm going to create a new full file here and um, put it in this folder the default folder I'm calling it gold this is Gold Creek tributary in the Brisbane area I'm not gonna put any descriptions in just in the interest of time. Um, Hopefully uh, you can follow along here. If we create a new component and a basin model, we're gonna call this one gold as well. No description here. Um, in your own projects, definitely put a description. Now in our basin model, there's nothing there yet. Um, and so we're gonna take this terrain data that I've just loaded up here. I'm gonna call it gold as well. And then browse to the folder where I've got that. And I'll pull that terrain file in. Um, hopefully, I know I'm going to go very quickly here, but you can just use the pause button if you get lost. Um, hit finish here, and there's the terrain, but you can't see it yet because it's not linked. So I need to take my basin model and link it to the terrain data, and then you'll see it asks you for where in the world you are. Now, this is a GeoTIFF with embedded projection information, and so I'm just going to skip that uh, projection part and let it pull from the GeoTIFF. Now, if I expand this out a little bit, you can see my terrain data here. Um, I'm going to go in uh, order on some of these GIS tools, skip the uh, conditioning ones, um, and just go straight to pre-processing sinks. So this can take a while, um, depending on the size of your file. But once it comes up, uh, you'll see where it has found low spots to fill in. Now, if I right click and go to map layers, you'll see that I now have sink fill and sink locations as layers that I can turn on and off. If I go to the Windows Explorer, I'll see also, um, let me just show you that the terrain that I grabbed from a mother directory uh, or parent directory is now down there and copied into a new terrain subfolder. And then under GIS, you can see all these new uh, sync fills and other layers will show up there. Um, so heck, HMS has pre-populated all of these subfolders for you. So next in the list, pre-process drainage. This can take a while. I've had it take two, three, four days sometimes on a really, really large file. But um, you won't, uh, it doesn't look like it's much there, but as you turn off the flow accumulation layer, you can see underneath it, you have flow directions in addition to the sink locations that we had previously developed. So with that, I'll just leave the terrain on and go to the next item in the menu, which is to uh, identify the streams. Now, this is very important. Um, if you want lots of streams, use a small number. If you want only a few streams and subbasins, use a big number. I'm going to use five square kilometers, just arbitrarily. What that's done now, you can see these lines show up. I've got identified streams in my layer, and I'm going to zoom in on that and put a breakpoint in because I'm going to tell HMS to delineate these streams uh, based on a point that I'm going to choose. 
Before I do that, though, before I choose a point, I want to zoom in as far as possible. Um, you'll get to a limit in that, but uh, if you zoom out too far and then try and put it uh, against one of the streams and it misses the location, you might have to do it again. So here's my breakpoint. I'm going to choose the breakpoint, put it down here near the confluence, and uh, try and get right in there and try and find the line on top of the line. And when I click on this, again, I'm just going to call everything gold and be not as descriptive as I ought to be, but there is my new breakpoint. Shows up in the layers, and now I could manage multiple breakpoints, but in this case, I'm going to delineate from this breakpoint using gold as my prefix. I will put some junctions in here and will convert uh, those breakpoints as well. Now, again, this process can take a while, depending on the size of your file. I've got a five meter background so it's not too bad in this case so let me get myself out of the way here and I'll show you what it has created um, this is a basin model so you can click on individual um, basins or junctions or reaches and get their properties and their parameters it's all been built in for you and geo referenced uh, what it has also done in the background though is created you a bunch of GIS files that you can pull into QGIS if you are a QGIS user. Um, I know this isn't a QGIS uh, tutorial, uh, but people who dig free runoff and rainfall uh, modeling software um, also dig free GIS software. So what I'll do here, I'll just show you with Windows Explorer in the main directory, we've got a SQLite file that's been developed. I'll just open up a blank QGIS project and drop it in. You can select any of these features that you'd like and pull them all in. And then anything that's geospatially referenced in your model will show up as a layer here. Now we're gonna focus on just two of these layers, um, the reaches and the basins. Um, I'll take each of these and export them as shape files first. And then what we'll do is do the same process for those who don't have QGIS in uh, HMS. So just file export, choose yourself a file name. I could set the coordinate system in the lower right there, um, but it has recognized for these shape files where we're at. And I'm gonna call this one uh, the gold basin. This is gonna give me all of my basins. And uh, as long as my projection is set right, I'll say okay. And it has now generated me a new shape file from that SQLite file. I'll do the same thing for the poly lines here with the reaches, export this, save the features, and I'll call this one the streams, I guess. So instead of basins, this will be the streams. And now I've got a shape file here under the GIS. Um, layer uh, or under the folder name called streams. So with that, I'll go back and again, for the benefit of those who don't have QGIS, um, let's do the same thing now under the GIS tab. We'll export layers, choose the sub basins, export this one, give it a file name. I'll stick it in that same directory just so you can see that um, this will give you essentially the same file as the SQLite export. And so here are the ones I just made. Those are the uh, files that make up a shape file. I'm going to call this one HMS just so you can see that it came from HMS and I'll do the same here for the reaches. So with these reaches, if I export these, uh, I'm going to call this the same thing with HMS as a suffix so that we know that this one came straight out of HMS when we compare it. Uh, I now have uh, four shape files that I have created. So what good does this do me as a HECRAS user? Well, let's open up HECRAS and start a new project and we'll see from there. So I'm just going to go under the HMS directory. I've created a HECRAS project. Uh, I'm going to say, yes, I want to create a new one and I'll go into RAS Mapper. I'm gonna pull the terrain straight in just like I did in HMS. And instead of selecting the spatial reference system, I'm just going to click on the terrain, same one that I used in HMS and I'll use the embedded projection details for that one and say, yes, I'll use that one. I always encourage people to be very descriptive about their files here. I'll say gold in this case, break my own rules and just create a, a new terrain file that should match what was in HMS as well. So when I turn that on, um, I will also add um, the Google hybrid just to make sure I'm in the right place. Fade that back a little bit and um, so that I can see where I'm at. And I'll just pull in these shape files that we've already created um, that were in the GIS directory. I'll pull in all four of these so you can see the comparison here. And what you'll see is now I've got my boundaries and uh, my reaches. 
and just I'll turn everything else off um, so you can see very clearly that the HMS layers and the uh, other layers that I generated from QGIS are exactly the same. So that wraps up part two of this series um, on delineating catchments or watersheds and flow paths in HMS. Uh, stay tuned for the next part where we'll take those shape files and generate a rain on grid model in RAS um, using those files. And then we'll do the same thing in part four in HMS and compare that. And I'll show you also some resources for how you can make some of these watershed maps like you see behind me. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Bye.